welcome to another wildlife photography tutorial and today I'm talking about camera support so when you're out in the field photographing wildlife what is the best way to support your camera I'm going to talk about the different options and when I think you should choose each one first up is good old-fashioned hand holding now if you think your equipment's relatively light that you're going to be able to hand hold for fairly long periods of time then this might be the best option now I'd seriously consider if you're looking at buying something uh, just to try and feel the weight of it in your hand because you need to have an idea of how long you're going to be able to hold it for when you're out in the field so if you're in, in a shop for example buying it brand new make sure you feel the weight of everything uh, or maybe you're buying it second hand just try and do that if hand holding is your chosen method of support then I would try and have a strap as well uh, for when you're walking around just to carry it just makes things easier it saves you a bit of energy as well now personally I think hand holding is fantastic for flying photography I find tripods really difficult for that for tracking birds in flight I much prefer whatever the lens I much prefer to do it hand holding so I think it just gives you more flexibility I find it's easier for that subject and then also I think hand holding is fantastic for stalking it can be really difficult to use a tripod or even a monopod when you're stalking something because you often get stuff that's in the way you have constantly having to make adjustments and it's just not that practical And next up, of course, is the tripod. And this is something you probably think of when people talk about camera supports for wildlife photography. So the tripod is really the best option for a heavy lens when you simply can't handhold it for very long. And the tripod gives you excellent support out in the field. Uh, it allows you to track the subject and to compose easily. There's so many options for tripods and tripod heads and combinations, but that's really a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but basically, I think tripods are going to be your best when you've no other option you've nothing else to rest the camera on so you're in the middle of a field for example uh, it's pretty much going to be your only option now I also think tripods tend to be a little bit better for more concentrated subjects so they can be quite heavy they can be quite cumbersome it's not something you ideally want to carry around all the time if you don't have to so for myself I tend to use a tripod more when it's much more targeted photography so that would either be a specific bird species or maybe an exact location and then I know exactly where I'm going I'll get down there I'll plonk myself down there and get set up and wait so for tripod I think it's going to be generally best uh, where you don't have to walk too far and a little bit more targeted And the next camera support that might be good for you is this thing, which is a monopod, kind of a, like half a tripod. Well, it's like a third of a tripod, really. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't even own a dedicated monopod. I've actually just found out recently uh, that I could take the leg off my vlogging tripod and turn it into the monopod that I've got here, which is really, really useful. Now, I think the potential benefits of the monopod is in the weight it's going to weigh less and also it takes up less space so it might give you a bit more flexibility it might be good in cramped conditions you don't have much room to move uh, maybe you're on a bridge for example uh, lots of people coming past and you want some camera support you know a monopod might be a good option there now in terms of heads uh, i can't speak from experience because i don't use one um, but i have a feeling that the gimbal heads and fluid, certainly fluid heads are probably not the best option for a monopod. I think a ball head uh, for me, if I was going to go for it, I think I'd go for a ball head. I have a feeling that that's probably going to work better on a monopod. Um, now another advantage I think potentially is adjusting your height quicker. So if you need to adjust your height to get to the same level as the subject in a tripod, it just takes a bit of time to do all three legs to do that. With a monopod, uh, it's just you know quick adjustments on that one leg and you can get it higher or lower as you need it. So that could definitely be an advantage. Now just a quick word on flight photography. Um, I think this can give you know good stability. I think it's really good for static subjects potentially and definitely yes you could track uh, you could track birds in flight but one of the problems I see and I've seen this quite often with people is when the bird goes higher which is often likely to happen um, and I think it's harder to kind of track it when you're pointing upwards and keep the monopod on the ground which is really the whole point and then what a lot of people end up doing is just kind of pointing the camera up 
uh, you know, almost like they're just hand holding and then the monopod's just sticking out, potentially hitting people in the face with the photo stick. So um, yeah, for flight photography, I don't know, I, I can see disadvantages there. Next up is the beanbag and I'm a massive fan of the beanbag for photography and I think it can give really good stability for pretty much any combination of camera and lens. So the great thing with the beanbag is that you can pretty much put it down anywhere as long as you've got a suitable surface. Uh, it might be the ground, that's why I originally used it for. But anywhere you can find to put the beanbag, like this fence post, it could be gates, uh, car window, car roof, a wall, all those things are going to be perfect. Now again, this kind of makes it a little bit more targeted for photography because if you want to use a beanbag, then you need to know that you've got somewhere to put it. So again, it's going to be a little bit more specific in terms of what you're photographing. One of the great things about beanbags as well is you can get really, really slow shutter speeds when you use a camera on a beanbag. Uh, so with really good technique, you can get down to incredibly slow shutter speeds as long as the subject stays very very still and the other thing to think about again is weight so if you want to use a beanbag then you need to think about the weight and again how far you're going to be going how far you need to walk to get to your destination I did do a video all about beanbags I put a link up on the screen it tells you a bit more and it also gives you some ideas about what you can fill the beanbag with The next one is to make use of anything that's available. So I think this is often an overlooked one. It's something I do from time to time. It can be really, really helpful. So anything you can find uh, when you're out in the field to rest the camera on, it can be really, really good. So for example, this wall, I could simply rest it on here and get more stability than just hand holding. So anything like this, a wall would be perfect. Uh, again, gates. Uh, fence posts, even tree branches. Sometimes you might be able to find a good solid tree branch, particularly uh, one that where it connects to the trunk. You get like a bit of a V. That can be absolutely perfect camera support. So this is obviously where you need something there. If there's nothing around, you obviously can't do that. Um, it's similar to the beanbag. The main difference is it's not going to be quite as stable and also I wouldn't advise you, you know, you take your hands away. With a beanbag sometimes you might be able to leave the camera resting and it's safe. If you're just using any available support then you probably can't do that, you need to keep your hands there at all times. But this can be a great option if you're photographing a subject and just look around and see if there's anything at all where you can rest your camera on because it's going to help your stability. Talking about support, another option can be to use your knee. That might seem a bit weird, um, but sometimes if you're caught short out in the field and you need some stability, it can work quite well. So what you want to do is get sat down and then just get one knee up there and then you can rest the camera on that knee. You kind of have to bend down a little bit. Not the most comfortable thing probably, um, but it's going to be a little better than hand holding. What I suggest as well is that you try and get the end of the lens on your knee. So rather than being forward like this, I would try and get the end of the telephoto lens on your knee and kind of pivot from there. I think it gives you better stability. The next one is to use some kind of ground pod, we could call it. So this is a homemade one, uh, but you can buy them, sometimes called skimmers and this is ideal for anything where you want to get low down to the same level as your subject to get those intimate images. Now you can do that with the beanbag as I used to do. There's two problems with that. The first is I think it's it's harder to push the beanbag along, it's harder to keep moving as you approach, it's a bit harder physically. This you can kind of, you can slide it a little bit easier on most surfaces. Uh, the second problem with the beanbag for low level work is sometimes it can grip the manual focus ring and that can you know completely uh, knacker up your focus basically so uh, if you're using a ground pod with a head like this then you're able to move freely you can track the subject freely as you would do on a tripod so it's much better uh, for tracking the subject now in terms of the head you use um, I actually think it's better to use a ball head I tried it with a gimbal head I don't think it worked as well the reason I like the ball head is you very rarely on a flat surface <laughs> with wildlife photography as now in fact I'm on a bit of a slope here and the ball head works really well because it's just it can move in any direction 
So even if you're on a slope here, it means because you've got that movement in, in all directions, it means you can, you can always kind of get it right, you can always level it. Uh, if you didn't do that, I think you'd have to use the lens collar to level your images and then that's more to do. I don't think it works as well. So I think ball head for this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so for this kind of support, I would say, again, it's more targeted. This one's very targeted, I would say. Uh, it's not something you're gonna carry around with you. You're probably gonna get a few funny looks as well, uh, but it's one way you're gonna go for something very specific that's low down, probably lying on the ground, and then you're able to track freely. So if you haven't tried this, give it a go for low level work. And the other thing you can do is to make use of other humans. Uh, so humans can be great for extra support for the camera and the lens, particularly on the shoulder next to the neck, you can just rest your camera gear there. Uh, so if you've got a really helpful partner or maybe a photographer friend is up for that, that could possibly be an option. But please remember to ask first. So, so obviously the last one was a bit of a joke, but I have actually seen people do it and I guess it is a possible option if you've got someone who's very helpful. If you've got any other suggestions for camera support that I haven't covered in this video that you think might work or things that you do to support your camera for wildlife photography then please drop it in the comments box below. I'd be interested to see that. If you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel for more photography tutorials and in the field vlogs. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.